Welcome everyone. Our names are Grace Phillip and Ellie Smith. We are seniors at Columbus Academy and also student alumni board representatives, which means we serve as the student board on the, on the Academy Alumni Board and also coordinate programming like our panel today. Today's event will involve interviewing our Columbus Academy alumni panelists about their respective college experiences and understanding what helped them make the, the correct choice for their future. We have questions prepared, um, but if time allows, we'll have a Q&A at the end. So please be respectful of this environment and the panelists' time by waiting until the end to ask your questions. For each panelist on the Zoom call, could you please state your name, when you graduated from Columbus Academy, the university you attend, and what your major and degree program is. I can go ahead and start. Um, hi, I'm Ashlyn. Um, I go to Indiana University. I am studying animal behavior and I will be, uh, I'm a sophomore currently, so I'll be graduating in two years. I can go next. Um, I'm Sejal. I currently go to Ohio State. I'm studying industrial and systems engineering. I used to go to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and I studied information science there, but I transferred after my freshman year to OSU, and I graduated from CA in 2021. Hi, I'm Muriel. Um, I'm old. I graduated college already. Um, I went to the university. I went to the University of Wisconsin. I graduated from Columbus Academy in 2018, and then I graduated college in 2022. So now I live in New York City. Hey, okay, great. Thank you. Um, thinking back on your college search process, what were you looking for, and how did you know it was the right choice for you? Additionally, considering all that that all of you attended big out of state schools, or some of you did. Um, did distance from home or warmer weather play a role, or was there something special that made your school stand out? Um, so I ended up choosing IU because of the animal behavior program. Um, it's very specific, and there's not a lot of schools that offer it. So that was one of the biggest reasons for me besides that. I love the campus. Um, it's beautiful. When I went there, it was like the perfect like fall, like really kind of cool. And the, it just looked so pretty. It was perfect. Um, and I think for me, uh, Bloomington is like three and a half hours away from home. It's the perfect distance. Um, it feels like I'm removed, but it doesn't feel too far that like if something happened, I couldn't go home. I feel like, you know, like I'm close to my family, but I'm also far enough away that I feel like I have my own life. Thank you. So for me, um, I first chose the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign because I was really interested in tech and computer science and all that. And it's like one of the best schools in the nation for that stuff. So I ended up going there. Um, but I decided to transfer to Ohio State because I'm like a really big family person and six hours one way of a distance ended up being too much. So I transferred over to OSU to be closer. Uh, oh, I didn't say this. I was a business major at Wisconsin. So I really cut down that anywhere. I chose, I wanted to go to a really big school. I wanted to go to a school where I could watch football. That was like my first indicator. So that really narrowed it to mostly big 10 schools. And then I am live in Bexley, so I'm three miles from Ohio State, so I didn't want to be that close to home. I like grew up going to camp in Wisconsin every single summer for a month, so I had a lot of like friends from Illinois and stuff that were going there, so I like had it on my mind just out of school from that experience. Um, and so I really didn't even go there because it was like a better business school in Ohio State or it was a better school than Indiana because I was looking at all three of those. It was mostly... I had some friends I had gone there and then also that's like surrounded by lakes and it was beautiful and it was definitely way colder than Ohio. So it was not the weather, but it was just nice to be in a college town that felt like Columbus, but really was like big enough with like restaurants and bars and things like that, but not be three miles from my house and kind of get that independence there. All right. Thank you so much. How did you choose your major or know it was the right fit for you? Did any classes at Academy help you make this decision? And do you still think it's the right one? Like, did you ever switch your major? Um, so I've been pretty set on what I wanted to do since I was born, pretty much. So um, I didn't really have any issues there. But um, 
I will say it's very like you you have friends in all different aspects of like studying and it's really interesting to see what they're doing too um so I wouldn't change my major but like I have friends in fashion I have friends in law they're just education like literally everything and it's really interesting to see everyone's stuff but I don't think I would change um and in terms of academy I didn't really help um but bio two which I don't think they offer anymore, unfortunately. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I think that was like the only class that really was like, oh my God, yeah. So for me, um, my major, I chose it actually because of CA. So um, going through high school, I took a lot of Mr. Feinberg's computer science classes and they really like shaped me into liking computer science and liking to code. So I took those and then I took Mr. DeVore's robotic class when I was a senior. And that was also really nice. Um, but then I did switch my major to industrial and systems engineering. And I did that because I realized that just doing a computer science degree was very technical, but in industrial and systems engineering, it's more of like um, the technical side of things along with like soft skills like business. And it was a good combination because I realized that I wanted to do management more than just being a software developer. For me, I think that school, like high school taught me what I didn't want to do, as in like, I wasn't very good at science. I wasn't very good at history. I was fine at stuff I got there, but nothing was like, I like love this. I want to go into fields like this. And so I didn't really know what I wanted. But at school, I was like very talkative, outgoing. I was like on the debate team, did like journalism, those kind of things. So I knew I wanted to do something around like communications or business so I went the business route it's kind of like what I the classes that I didn't get at academy because you don't get like other than the econ class which I wasn't able to take you don't get a lot of those like business like classes so it's almost like I wanted to try that because that's kind of had my strengths more that weren't in a sort of classroom like just overall like high school experience what I did I did kind of switch my major so I was a marketing major when I started I went in not in the business school so I had to apply um, to the Wisconsin Business School my freshman year in March. So I went in as undecided, I believe, in like this, whatever the basic like school is. So that's what you guys end up doing. It should not scare you as long as you get good grades, which I promise Cons Academy makes it so easy to like study and know how to like not how to do well in school and not like overstress and kind of get everything done. It really was not a challenge to get that done. So I got in in March. I declared my major as marketing beginning of my sophomore year. I kept that, but then I wasn't really set on, I realized like halfway through my junior year, I didn't really want to go into marketing because I'm not that creative. I wanted to be on the front facing side of business because I like talking, but I didn't necessarily want to like be creating things. So I added a double major in the middle of my junior year, almost the end of it actually in supply chain management. And that, so like I had both, but that was kind of what I liked the most. Now I work in fashion, so it's not technically all those things directly, but I work with like the last end of like supply chain to so like getting product to stores. And I work with like a corporate company. So I think it did help, but it's just like the overall skills you use. It's not like I did exactly what my major was like I didn't come like a doctor and do exactly that it was this is a little bit more open-ended and you can kind of apply your major to any career pretty much great thank you um if one of the graduating seniors were to attend your school next year what advice would you give them um I think are you talking about like visiting or going and, and being there? Um, like maybe like, probably like going there, but yeah. Okay. Um, so I would say for IU, um, the one thing that I did not know about um, is that it is very, very, very Greek like he life heavy. Um, if you are not in a sorority or frat, um, it's kind of hard to have a social life there. Um, but with that being said, you do not have to be in one. Um, you can find other things. There's a lot of things to do. Bloomington's a great city. There's a lot of great restaurants. Um, I, I would say the number one thing is explore, get out, learn your town, regardless of where you're going. 
learn the things around it, find things to do. If you're not doing, like, if you're not actively doing schoolwork or some other like club work or whatever, you're probably going to be pretty bored. So you have to find things to go do. Um, and it's really not that hard, but you have to find the motivation to do it. And that can be hard. To kind of piggyback off of that, I have some more general advice, not really like Ohio State or UIUC specific, but something I just noticed is that um, you really have to be fearless. I feel like Academy kind of put us into a little bubble where we're with the same people for a really long time, and it becomes hard to kind of um, take the initiative of making friendships, but when you're at a new college, you really have to like be fearless and go up to people, form those connections by yourself. Because if you don't, then you'll be left a couple weeks in and you'll realize that you don't really have many friends outside of your classes and you don't really have those people to hang out with. So you really need to be like fearless and go make those connections on your own. I agree with that. And then the only other thing I'll add is obviously if you're here considering big schools. So whether you're going to IU, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan, like Illinois, any of those, the biggest because they're such big universities, you have to find your own small pockets of friends. But what they do provide that a lot of small schools will never provide is a very big sense of community because they have football. They have like big basketball programs or hockey or whatever the sport may be. And that does create a sense of community in a school that's 60,000 people. So even if you don't love sports or you don't like watching that stuff, I'd still make sure when you're going there, like you're going to every Saturday, you're like doing this stuff, you're going to dress up with like, your friends because that's like how you can take kind of the community because at academy like we have that community it's just smaller and that's the only way you can really get that of the big schools you have to kind of put yourself in those and then when you do that you'll be able to then find actual people that you're have things in common with it can make those small friends but i would say once you start you just have to like even if you don't like football or you don't like hockey whatever the sport may be you have to like kind of go to those things and like participate because that's how you get that like sense of community that doesn't just come with going to a small school of 90 kids where you just know everyone and that's how you build it. Great, thank you so much. Um, one of our final questions is, what advice would you give to Academy seniors who are going through the college decision process? Would you do anything differently if you could do the process all over again? Um, I think one of the biggest things for me was it's not as scary as you feel like it is. Um, there's a lot to it. You're preparing for it your junior year. Uh, you're getting ready for it senior year. You're doing all your visits, all the applications, everything. It's a lot. But um, when you find the school that fits with you, you know instantly. Um, it's at least for me, like I had done tour after tour after tour and Indiana was the last place that I wanted to go because I was so done with touring places and it was different I just knew it was the correct place so you kind of have that feeling of like I know this is right some people have that and then it changes and that's fine because you have to actually live there to understand what the school is like no tour is going to be like this is how it is it's not also all the tours are about the same Every information is just about the same. Every school has the same kind of security, all that kind of stuff. So choose something that really fits for you. That's what I would say. Yeah, I agree with that. So for the reason why I went to Illinois is because I saw like something really specific in the program, which is why I went there. And it's just small things like that. You have to really do a lot of research and figure out where it is you want to go. And even if you do all that research and you're still a little bit confused, then honestly, just like spin a wheel and pick one off of that, because if it lands on something and then you feel like a sinking feeling inside, like, oh, I actually don't want this. And that tells you that inside you actually had a college you wanted to go to. And at the end of the day, even after going to the college, if you're not happy, then transferring is always an option. And it's a really easy process to transfer. So it's always something that you can do.
I would say I had a little different experience, but same overall ideas. I did not know where I wanted to go to school at all. I decided the last possible day, April 29th, is when I sent in my like deposit for our like senior day. I did not have a shirt for Wisconsin because I had decided so last minute it did not come in time. So for me, it was really just like, okay, I'm going to apply to all the college. I'm going to see where I get in. And then April was just figuring out like, little things of like what I wanted, why I wanted it and like picking it out. Now I will say when I kind of narrow it down to three schools, I gravitated towards Wisconsin. And even though I was in like better programs in other schools and I was in like the business school in one place, I was in like a leadership school in another place, even though I had like better overall like education stuff lined up there, I didn't, I knew I didn't, like I didn't have a feeling that I wanted to go there. So even though I decided last minute, like by the end, I was trying to be logical and choose but really I ended up just choosing what I was most excited about going to even though it was one like objectively that was like gonna be the hardest to like get into the business school do what I had to do to get where I am and I still did and it worked out so you don't have to put so much pressure on like I have to go to the best school ever of course like everywhere you're applying is a good school so once you narrow it down if you get into your favorite one great if you don't that's totally fine as well I would say once you get all of your options and you're accepted into them, that's when you should really think about what's the best one. Because if you're gun set on one for one reason, you might be neglecting like other feelings you're having towards another school and why those might be important as well. Can I jump back in really quickly? Yeah. Um, if you are rejected from any of the schools that you're interested in, do not take that as like, there's something wrong with you. There's probably not. There's a lot of factors that go into um, actually choosing candidates for like joining the school. So if you don't like I wanted to go to UVM and it was the one school that I didn't get into and it ended up working out perfectly. So you never know what's going to happen. Um, and I think where I went wrong, I think Muriel did a good job explaining that. Like I was so set on UVM and I was so disappointed and I ended up loving Bloomington. So just keep your mind open. Everything will work out how it's supposed to. What is UVM? Uh, University of Vermont. They got a lot of them. So we have a little bit of time left and I would like to open it up uh, to a Q and A with the students present. Um, does anyone have any questions they would like to ask our panelists? Yes, Kelly? Um, for dorm life, uh, first of all, if you had like a dorm requirement and like you lived in the dorms, uh, what was your experience with it? Uh, how'd you like it? And then roommate picking, how did that go? I can start, I guess. We'll mix it up. Um, I did live in the dorms. At Wisconsin, the requirement is only one year. So it was just freshman year. And then after that, you're on your own in an apartment, like making your own food, all the things. So it was just one year and that was a while ago. But I honestly loved it. I was on a co-ed floor. So I had guys and girls. I personally think that's so much fun because I was able to like make so many guy friends and have so many girlfriends too. And we were all together. So it wasn't like we were my, yeah, Wisconsin's every, it was like literally, I, it was like every other door. So it wasn't like separated by hallways. I know a lot of schools don't do that, but that was my experience and I wouldn't change it for anything. It was so much fun. I feel like I never watched TV. I never sat in my room. I was never by myself. I mean, I, you could be, but I like am social and everyone's always excited and willing to be social. So I loved it being able to like come back from a long day of studying or work and like sit in our shared space and just like hang out and talk to everyone. Obviously, if you want to like, go in your room, be quiet. You can, no one's going to bother you, but you have a community there all the time with friends around you. So I, my, that was my experience. And I, so my, my best friend from college, I talk every day, I was on my floor freshman year, uh, for dorm stuff. I not dorm for my like roommate. They have like Facebook pages and I don't know, I guess you guys don't really use Facebook now, but they have Snapchat, maybe whatever the pages of the school sets up. So you can like reach out and find people that's also looking big in around the same dorms as you. And you can like talk to them about their life and like see if you guys are a good match. So it's not, and I wasn't random, but it's not like I lived with someone I knew. It was someone else and it worked just fine. Her and I aren't like the best of friends, but the roommate stuff was totally easy. We like got along. There was no drama. We were like friendly, but not besties. I think that's honestly the best option. It's like, you're friendly, you get along, you can live together, but you aren't inseparable and you don't hate each other I feel like finding that having medium is really all that matters in a roommate 
So for me, um, for both colleges, I lived in the dorms for a year. And both times I went random because I got a little bit lazy about finding a roommate. So I went random and it ended up being fine. So what I did both years is that I also had co-ed floors um, and I did something that's a little bit scary. I went around to everyone on the floor and knocked on everyone's door to introduce myself and it ended up working out great. So at Illinois, um, I like made a big group of like 20 people and we were all like best friends and i'm actually like next week over thanksgiving break i'm going to go visit everyone because we still have those like lasting friendships um at osu it ended up working out a little bit different um people weren't really as social on my floor so it didn't work out that way but you have lots of other opportunities to make friends such as clubs and in your classes so it's not really that big of a deal if you're not best friends with everyone on your floor as long as you have an okay relationship with your roommate and you're civil then everything is fine <laughs> Yeah, so um, all the comments about good roommates, make sure you got a good one. I um, I was on a co-ed floor as well. Um, fantastic. We were like a family. It was literally like you would come home from class and everyone's there like waiting for you. You could go talk to anyone. It Like I had a fantastic experience with my floor. My roommate and I did not get along at all. Um, there were a lot of issues. I'm not saying that to deter anyone. I, it just, I ended up choosing a, someone that just wasn't compatible, just didn't work out. Um, and the one mistake that I made that I don't want you guys to make is that if you have a roommate that you don't like, get out as soon as you can. Don't, don't wait. Don't try to make things, whatever, just you will be better, your roommate will be better, your schoolwork will be better, everything. If you have a good living situation, everything else will be okay. I promise. It's just, we had an issue, but we met on patio, which some places use, some places use Facebook. We had big Snapchat group chats. You could go on Instagram. You can find roommates pretty much anywhere. Um, but yeah, for sure. Don't, don't, room with someone that you think you're going to be best friends with because it always creates problems I will add one thing it's not hard it sounds like it's hard to change roommates and you have to like put the effort in to do so but it's possible my friend across the hall her roommate didn't like living in our dorm it was too ratty for her so she like applied to transfer she was able to move I know people who had opposite experiences so you have to go through the steps and advocate for yourself, and especially at a big school and anything, school, living, anywhere, no one else is advocating for you. You're at a school of 600, 600, 60,000 kids. However, if you advocate for yourself in a dorm, in a class, whatever it might be, you'll be able to get out of that situation. You just have to like make sure you're doing it for yourself because your parents aren't there. Your teachers don't know you as well. Like You'll just have to do it yourself, but it's possible. It's not hard. It just It's your decision to step up and support you. Yeah, to piggyback off of that, um, last year at OSU, my um, one of my roommates, um, her and I didn't get along. And one week I was gone and I came back and the room was just full of bugs. So just like make sure it doesn't get to that point with your roommate that it gets so bad that things like that happen. Get out while you can. And put bugs yeah. in there. Um, it was, was nasty there was like a lot of trash and i um i wasn't really a fan of taking out her trash for her so i just decided to see like how long it would build up until she took it out and then i made the mistake of going home for a bit um and that happened so yeah just make sure that instead of being petty like i was and just trying to see like how far she would take it just move out it's it's the easiest possible thing. So, yeah. Great. Do we have any other questions? I have a question. Since I grew up in Florida and I went to Ohio State, for those of you that grew up obviously here and then went to school out of state, what was the one thing you were nervous about in that transition? And are you still to this day kind of feeling that or no? I felt fine leaving. I also went from Midwest to Midwest. So, and everyone, as in all of us. So we kind of stick to our, stuck to our roots a little bit. Um, I'd say I'm, we are most worried about like 
having to like advocate for yourself like your plan like you know you have to do it in a classroom or like in sports and things but be like oh like I have to go buy my own like medicine when I'm sick oh like I have to know like when I can't go to like all like those little things of like oh like shampoo costs like thirty dollars just like little stuff like that that's probably what I was most nervous about of being like oh like I'm on my own I have to like do my own, like do everything by myself and like think of them like don't think oh like you need to go like do x y and z it's like oh I need to go do these things or like when I had strep my mom didn't say go to the doctor I had to walk myself around campus to the doctor and like make an appointment when I like broke my arm on campus I had to make my like x-ray it's like those things of like the advocating is probably the hardest thing being so far away but it's fine and you grow up and you learn like how to do it and it's good um and now I'm an adult and it still stinks, but it's not scary anymore. Yeah, I think it was similar for me, like just the like insane amount of responsibility that comes with like moving out of your parents' house and like living alone. Um, well, you'll have a roommate, but it's like, you're like basically on your own. So yeah, it was like a little bit scary because um, like what happened was that my parents drove me to the dorm they like dropped all my stuff off and then they went back and I was like okay I have a whole bunch of stuff and I have to unpack this all on my own and I have to make friends and I have to eat and I have to do this 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 and this and it's like how do I manage all this but um just don't make a mountain out of a molehill calm down and just do things one by one and I promise it's not that bad yeah I would say going from Ohio to Indiana was actually a downgrade I don't like Indiana as a state but um it's it's really not as scary as you think it will be especially like if you are someone who's good about independence in the first place you are going to have a really really easy transition a lot easier than you think you will um I've always been pretty independent um and it was like it was literally like I had just moved into a new room genuinely like it was so it's not as hard as you think it's gonna be um but I think the worst thing was saying goodbye to my family that's that's the hardest every time no matter like coming home or like going back to school saying bye is always the worst part but yeah all right thank you do we have any more questions Thank you so much for your time. This has been really great for our oh, students. Thank you.